a lot of ball kids end up on the scene, and some of them 14, 15 years old, just to get those kids off the streets. And I will say, sometimes we have had to tell kids on the side, you know, this is how old you need to be. You fill out the application. If your age, if your birthday say you're old enough, you're old enough. Nine times out of ten, because I knew exactly the circumstances they were they were coming from, my managers were instructed give them an interview. They came for their interview dressed up. They get a job. I had three stores, and as a result, there were a lot of ball kids in the Midwest that were ball kids and packing kids that I actually employed at Checkers Double Drive Through Restaurant just to give them an alternative so that they don't be caught up in wow. the negative side you of the grow. story. That's amazing. That now, is great. Two, uh, moving along in 2007, uh, that, that took us up to about around, around 2004, I then took a trip to the UK. I decided to open up an additional house but because it wasn't, you know, I wasn't able to get back and forth to communicate or be over there and take part in a lot of the events. Later on that, that next year, after they had existed, I had given them permission to, be, you know, just start their own house and be on their own. And they eventually became the House of Barons in the UK. And that was the only house at the time in the UK and luckily for, for me, uh, Frankie Knuckles, who had stopped DJing for a while in the Midwest, was at this club called the Hippodrome in uh, the UK at the time that I was there. I was like, what are the chances of this? Wow, that's amazing. He, Frankie Knuckles, he plays the most, Yes, he played the most sickening music that night. So I said, this is right on time. And... After that, you know, coming back to the States, that's when I began to see again that instead of the ball community now, full-fledged ball community providing, you know, more positive uh, avenues for, for people that they were actually helping, then you, you begin to see some of the negative sides of the scene. And, and you have that in any social organization. But the problem is, it's not that we these issues ever occurred. It's just that it why is it that only the negative side of who ballroom kids are or the LGB community has to be seen all the time. There are tons of positive sides to that as well. Right. So in nineteen in two thousand seven in the Midwest, that's when we had uh, this uh this major ball. It was it was Headed by uh, icon Kevin uh, Ultra Omni and Midwest icon uh, Waddell Avant Garde. And it was called the Come and Get Your Status Ball. And of course, they had already had uh, status balls in other locations. But at this time, this was at the point in which, because remember, we, we, are literally, we were still literally new. And we count as 10 years as like sort of being. Uh, a generation of ball kids, and we had still not had our legends or our icons appointed yet. Wow. And at this time, that's when uh, Wardell and Kevin came together and they decided, well, we'll appoint, you know, these people icons now, and we will allow them to take care of everybody else. Well, of course, that didn't happen and that created a whole lot of strife within the region. Just like during the time which I call the time of the empty throne, when a lot of the original uh, ball families or pioneers, uh, you know, started doing a lot of more community work as opposed to living in the ball scene, those kids that took over, they took over and they did a marvelous job with keeping, you know, the, the flame alive. But what ended up happening was they forgot to bring the history along with them. And now you almost have like this civil war amongst, you know, the older pioneers and icons and the newer kids who think 
that they did everything on their own. And it's like, really? That That's like having, uh, you know, activists of today claim that they were the ones responsible for civil rights right, type right. actions. It's like, really? Right. <laughs> so that's sort of what we're dealing with now. But eventually in uh, 2014, December the 24th, Kevin Alter Omni brings me Icon, Gentry, and Drummer. Wow. Amazing. And congratulations, by the way. And there you have it. That's, that's Icon, Gentry, and Drummer. Wow. Let's go a little bit into, you know, some of your awards and your achievements. Gentry, are you there? Hello? Yes, let's go into, let's talk a little bit about your achievements, your trophies, your diplomas, and your awards. Hello? Uh, uh, is he? Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your, you know, your trophies, your awards, you know, uh, stuff like oh. that. Okay, well, in uh, I know you have a lot of achievements, trophies, diplomas, and awards going on. So let's talk a little bit about <laughs> that subject because a lot of people don't know and they haven't gotten into this. And this is actually a new fab trend that's starting in the bowling scene. So please explain. Okay. Okay. Well, I uh, starting with awards. I mean, from back in the, the walking days, I. I re- I received a lot of trophies for a model's body, and then eventually I transcended over to do uh, voting old way. And at that time, my old way was almost like a new way without the stretch. And it was something different because I was like a martial art guy. So I won a few trophies there. Then eventually, I was uh, my house, and my I was recognized as a pioneer. West in 2007 by uh, icon Kevin Omni and uh, icon uh, Warrior Avant Garde. And at the 2014 Omni, uh, Omni uh, 35th Anniversary Ball, I received the Omni Distinction, Icon Distinction Award. Outside of the ball uh, community, uh, I uh, I published three novels. One is titled uh, uh, Too Many Secrets, and it was about the criminal justice system and how state's attorneys were uh, forcing, uh, you know, indigent uh, defendants to plead guilty to charges that they weren't guilty of. My my next book after that was the fifty. My latest book was Fifty Fifth Degree. In my skin, I had a revision of Too Many Secrets. So 50 50 Green was my last book, and that's about a uh, secret society and organization. And I also have a couple of more other items, uh, photographs and things of that nature, that I have uh, intellectual property rights on. Okay, well, amazing. Now, let's talk a little and, bit about... Uh, huh? And I was going to also say, aside from being a retired son of the United States Army, <laughs> all of this yes. still doing that process. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of achievements right there. Yes. Very, very well, fun. Currently, I, currently I'm, uh, I'm a graduate student at DePaul University majoring in education leadership. That's also where I received my bachelor's in peace, justice, and conflict studies. So yes. my goal has always been for me as a ball parent and as an icon of the region to always set the best possible example you can for the kids that are coming up behind you by what it is that you are doing, not by what you are saying. Because people say a lot of things to ball kids on the scene and they don't mean those things. You you can't tell one a child, don't be stealing or doing this or doing that when you're crafting credit cards and things Ooh. like that nature. So <laughs> I want to make sure that I set the best possible example for my ball kids and anybody else that saw me within the ball community. And that I can say I'm absolutely proud of because even some of my kids that eventually left my house and ended up joining other houses 
they still took that that legacy of Andromeda with them because they refused to call their new house parents, you know, mommy and daddy. When they asked, when one of my kids had told me that he got in a conflict with his house father because he didn't recognize him as his house father. When they asked the child who his house father was, he said, Gentry Andromeda, the house father got mad. But it's like, you can't get mad for me doing my job and being exactly what I was supposed to be to that child, which was his parents. I wasn't supposed to be his best friend, his good girlfriend, Judy. That's what he that's what he had friends in the community for. When you decide you want to be a ball parent, that's exactly what you need to be and don't play games with it. Right. Exactly. That's a lot of the stuff in the conspiracy area controversy that things that's going on in the ball too. Right now, but you know, before we even get into that, I know you've walked your first ball, uh, and you you've you've walked you've walked and you won trophies. What are some of the first categories you walked? My the first category I walked was models body, because at the time I had just in 1992 I had just came back from the military, so you know I, the body was just bam bam thank you ma'am all over the place so. <laughs> Everybody was trying to recruit me to join their house. And again, that's when Andromeda came about. But I walked Bottles Body first. And that was my main category. Perfect work. Now, I know you also... You tried hand performance in the Designer's Delight. Is that true? Yes. Tell us, tell us a I little bit about, about your, your designs. Well, the most, my most famous design, and you, you are not going to believe it, my most famous design that I had, it actually, it actually was only one, but it was one that was legendary. It had never happened before. We, there was a ball that was being hosted, and I, it was at the, the club called The Clubhouse. And the, the category was bring uh, one uh, couture item, you know, no sewing machine, better had touched it, yes. and you get that one item to bring to the runway. So everybody else brought up full suits, outfits, and everything, and then Aaron Enigma, he was the main designer, I mean, reign in the neighborhood, and he brought a dress. So then I introduce a, a a dress style hat that slipped up into a top hat and I won grand prize because of the innovation of the hat because they had never seen it done. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, all, it's, on, it's on YouTube as well. I was like, no. But that was the first one that I actually won a uh, grand prize and it was the top hat design. All right. And you did Old Way. Who did you battle yeah. in Old Way? Who did I battle? Yes. Oh, for, for Old Way, when I first started Old Way and started learning how to hold, that actually was a direct result of my good buddy named Tyrone Harvard. Right. And when I tell you that if Tyrone was alive today, that child probably would still be the most sickening as old way vulgar and new way vulgar on the planet because he was that good. There was there was no rival. The only one that could even have even come close to him would be uh, icon Aaron Enigma. That was the only one in this region. So I learned voguing from him. And eventually, uh, you know, I said, well, I started watching ball tapes and I, I ended up seeing Muhammad who happened to be in Omni at the time, and he was talking about hieroglyphs and kung fu movies, so I started watching a whole lot of kung fu movies since that's what I was, because my, my nickname was a Jap. And my, my cousin used to just call me that because right. I used to walk around with Chinese outfits on all the time. So because I was involved with a martial arts school, I started mixing all of those things together. And then when I was voguing and when we were voguing in the Midwest, we didn't, they, they weren't really at 
the ball. They were in the club, like, Beach Street.